everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Erin Pollard, the Project Officer for ERIC in the U.S. Department of Education, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar. Today we're going to be talking about how to use ERIC, and specifically the ERIC website at eric.edu.gov for con conducting systematic evidence reviews in the field of education. We're going to begin by giving you some background on systematic reviews, including a description of what they are, how they're conducted, and why they're useful. Then we're going to go over the steps for conducting this type of research in ERIC, and then demonstrate some features of ERIC that can be useful for this process. Before we get started, I have just a couple housekeeping items. First, we're having a mixed presentation of attendees both here in person and online. So we have muted everyone on the phone to reduce noise during our presentation, but it would be great if you could also mute your phones. And then we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. If you're attending remotely, please enter your questions on the chat box to the side of the screen, and we'll take them um, at the end of the presentation. We are also recording the webinar, and it will be available for viewing on the ERIC YouTube channel in a few weeks. You'll be getting an email to let you know when it's online. Um, we are closed captioning this presentation, so if you want to turn off the captioning, please click the X in the media viewer. All right, so today you're going to be hearing from two of us. Starting with me, I am the Project Officer for ERIC at IES, um, Institute of Education Sciences, here in the U.S. Department of Education. I'm providing a quick introduction and a wrap-up, and next we're going to hear from Bridget Thomas, who is a senior education researcher on the ERIC team with Quality Information Partners. All right, so following the introduction, Bridget will give an overview of the systematic evidence reviews and introduce ERIC as a key resource for education research. She will describe how to use the ERIC website at eric.ed.gov to identify relevant sources for systematic reviews and then demonstrate ERIC's research tools and I will walk and walk through a quick systematic review. Then we'll answer any questions that you ha will have. So now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Bridget. Thank you, Erin, and welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. As Erin mentioned, we want to start with a bit of uh, background about systematic evidence reviews. Um, a systematic evidence review is a type of literature review that collects and critically analyzes multiple research studies. Specific research questions are identified first, and then articles that can specifically speak to those questions and provide relevant data are selected and reviewed, and then the findings from those studies are integrated in a logical fashion and summarized. The goal of a systematic review is to use a clearly defined process to identify and select appropriate articles, and then use them to develop an exhaustive review of the current literature related to your research questions. Historically, systematic reviews have commonly been used in evidence-based fields like medicine, but they are also very relevant to education. As the field of education has focused more and more on evidence-based practice over the past two decades, uh, they have become increasingly critical as a means of accumulating a broad range of data and answering key questions. Systematic reviews are conducted in education research across many different topic areas. For example, uh, you see on your screen three recent IES systematic reviews. Um, the first is a 2015 NCEE report summarizing the results of a systematic review of evaluations of the 10 different interventions that were funded by the Striving Readers Grant Program in 2006 and 2009. The second is a 2015 review by RHEL Southeast uh, that was of 52 studies that were focused on the relationships between principal characteristics and student achievement. And the third is a 2014 review by RHEL Appalachia of 30 studies that focused on the effects of increased learning time. Systematic review is an important methodology because it allows a researcher to summarize research findings on a particular topic across a potentially large number of studies. This increases the overall number of participants and strengthens conclusions drawn about research questions by providing a larger amount of data and showing consistencies in findings across multiple studies. If there are discrepancies among studies or gaps in the literature, systematic review can also indicate places where additional research is needed. Systematic reviews are an important tool in the education world for understanding the state of the research in a given educational area. Uh, rather than relying on small numbers of studies that may not be replicable or studies that show disparate results, a systematic review allows the researcher to draw from a wide pool of results to see the key trends in research findings across many studies. 
However, systematic reviews can be time consuming and researchers are not necessarily skilled in doing them effectively. Uh, it is imperative, for example, that the researcher have the skills to ensure that he or she identifies and selects appropriate studies to answer the research questions. So the rest of this webinar will focus on using the ERIC database on the IES uh, sponsored website for effective identification of research articles in a systematic evidence review. Uh, you can find this database at eric.ed.gov. The ERIC database includes 1,141 academic journals, as well as materials from 812 non-journal sources that include government documents, white papers, conference papers, fact sheets, and other gray literature materials. When searching for resources on a particular topic, users have a host of tools that can be used to narrow down uh, their search list to the items that most appropriately fit their criteria. So to begin a search, a user will usually enter a phrase into the main search window. For example, you may want to search for articles about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. You could try searching the commonly used acronym ADHD. So I will start there. I will also attempt to type the right thing. All right, and you can see that by searching uh, the acronym ADHD, I got these, this list of results uh, with the numbers right there, okay? You can also potentially search it using the whole phrase. I'm sorry, I don't know if that was. And you see that when you search that way, we do get a different number um, of results. The search engine searches the title, authors, author, descriptors, and abstract for the terms that you enter in order to locate and list the resources that best match your search. So that, uh, this is why users often use more than one phrase or wording when they search. They want to be sure that they're allowing the search engine to effectively find the right items. Additionally, it is why the ERIC search tools are so important. Um, they allow the user to begin paring down the list to center it on the most useful sources. So as we begin to discuss the different search tools, uh, let us suppose that you're going to do a systematic evidence review of preschool literacy interventions. If you start back on the site by searching the term Preschool literacy. You get a very long list of sources, which is still coming up. Here we are. So you get you get a very long list of sources. Um, this is when you would begin to use the tools called limiters. Um, first, we have initial limiters such as publication date range, publication type and whether a source has been peer-reviewed. So let's look at each of those. If I want to look at the date range, say I want to only see studies from the last five years, I can come over here on the left and click on last five years. And then my list is limited to those that have only come out the past five years. I can remove that to go back to the full list. And now I may also want to search um, by publication type. So let's say I'm searching just uh, for things that are in the journal articles list. Okay, and we should note this include, uh, includes final peer-reviewed manuscripts as well as articles from periodicals. So searching journal articles. It will again limit uh, my search to just those that, that have been marked as such. Okay. And then I'm going to again go back to the full list to show the next 
uh, limiter. Uh, many times a user will want to include only studies that have been peer reviewed. Uh, this designation means that the study has gone through a process in which it is reviewed by experts in the subject area to confirm that it has met specified expectations for quality and research requirements. Eric assigns the peer review flag to both journal and non-journal or gray literature records uh, if the resource has been peer reviewed. Peer reviewed journal articles are tagged from 1966 forward and grantee publications and IES reports uh, have been tagged for the past few years. Eric only recently began tagging non-IES funded peer reviewed gray literature, so you will see fewer of those types of resources in your searches. So if you want to search things that are peer reviewed, the box is right here below your search window. If you click that and then hit search again. And as you can see, we are waiting for it. Eric.gov, and they're about to come up. Thank you. Okay, so the list that we currently have are the ones that have just been peer reviewed, and you can see uh, this that I'm showing you right now. Ones that have been peer reviewed have this check mark saying that they have indeed been marked as a peer reviewed document. Okay? Beyond these basic limiters, um, you can also limit by source or by author if you're, if you're interested in a particular author's work. So we will do a search that does that as well. Taking it out of this, I'm just taking you back to the original list again first. And we, are, uh, we have a slight pause. Yes, so just give us one second for this to connect. We appear that what we are going to do is we are going to stop sharing so everybody should see the slides. And we apologize for this delay. We are, why is this not working? Are connected to the internet. All right, so now we will begin to share our screen. All right, are we made the presenter? Yes, you are. Okay, so we are going to share my screen, and now it should work. All right. Um, yes, going back to limiting by source or by author. For example, back on the original list of preschool literacy, if I wanted to um, look for articles that had been published in the journal. Yes, if I want to look uh, in uh, for sources that are, have been published in the journal Early Child Development and Care because I know that that um, has articles that would be particularly relevant to what I'm looking for, I can come here and you'll notice that for the ones that are longer titles, if you do hover over it, it will show you the full title so you know you're looking for the right thing. If I click on that, it narrows my list to just those uh, ones under preschool literacy that were published in the journal that I'm looking for, early child development care in this case. I can also, removing that, go back to the list, I can also search for articles published by a particular author. So for example, I may have read other things by Christopher Lonigan and I know that it's likely that his other work is relevant to what I'm looking for. I can click on that and it will take me to articles where he is noted as, uh, as one of the authors. Okay. Beyond this, your study may also require even more precise specialization. Uh, 
Uh, ERIC recently made improvements to the ERIC identifiers, which help narrow down a source list to studies related to a particular location, an assessment or survey, or a law, policy, or program. So let's look at each of those. Coming back to our full list. Um, for example, you may want to search by location because you know you want to search for things that have been tagged with the New York uh, location identifier. And so this would bring the list to just those. Okay, now it should be noted that sources are only tagged by location if that location has been explicitly included. So every study conducted with children from New York would not necessarily come up in this list uh, because the authors may not have specified their location. In many research studies, the location of the data collection is deliberately described only using broad details, such as a mid-sized university in the American Southwest. So, but if it has been tagged by location, you can search that way. Alternatively, in your search for preschool literacy, you may be looking for articles that have used a particular assessment. Uh, maybe you know you want to look for things that have used the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. So again, on the list on the left, if I come down to assessments and surveys, and I see that the first one listed is indeed Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. I can click on that. And ones that have been tied with that identifier will come up. Potentially, uh, my study could also relate to a particular law or policy. So maybe uh, my search for preschool literacy articles also relates to No Child Left Behind. So if I come down to Laws, Policies, and Programs and click No Child Left Behind, again, it will limit the list to those that have also been marked there. So if we scroll down, you can see, right, for example, there's a national evaluation of early reading first that related to uh, No Child Left Behind as part of what it talked about. Causing problems for a moment. Excuse me. Okay. Um, another way that users can limit the results is by using descriptors. These are search tags and key elements of the ERIC thesaurus, which is the main controlled vocabulary for ERIC. Descriptors are assigned to each ERIC record to indicate the main topics of the article or report, regardless of the terminology used by the author. Um, searching using descriptors will find records that you may not otherwise find if the author has used different terms to describe the content. Limiting by descriptors can help you focus your search by eliminating records that are not relevant. Um, so descriptors are tools that can really help you find targeted materials in this database uh, of more than 1.6 million records. Going back to the site, we can see that, back to our original list, uh, the descriptors are located in two places. First, they are listed right here on the side of the screen um, when your source list first comes up. So potentially, in my search for preschool literacy, I may be particularly interested in emergent literacy. So I can click this and see ones that have been specifically tagged as uh, referencing emergent literacy. Additionally, uh, you can find descriptors on each individual article page. So if you find an article that you know is useful, you can look at the descriptors that have been provided and click on them to find other articles that fall under that same descriptor. So potentially, I know that I want to look at this article, uh, Emergent Literacy, Preschool Teachers, Beliefs and Practices. If I click there, First of all, this gives me more information about the article, right, and the abstract. And here, the descriptors are listed right below the abstract, okay? So if I then wanted to use this as a way to find other articles on emergent literacy, this will first take me uh, to the Eric Thesaurus page for the descriptor, which helps you understand the meaning of the descriptor so you know how it's defining what you're looking for. So once I see that, I can then also right here, search the collection using that descriptor. Now it should be noted that once I have searched using that descriptor, this may be giving me articles that are beyond um, just preschool literacy. 
but it may be that my study um, is focusing on both preschool literacy and then also looking at the broader idea of emergent literacy. Okay. And alternatively, you can begin your whole search uh, by using descriptors as well. We will go back to the original list. Okay. Another consideration that you may have in determining the value of a particular uh, study to your systematic review is how the study or the intervention that it incorporates was rated by the What Works Clearinghouse. Uh, the What Works Clearinghouse reviews research studies to determine if the methods used support the claims of whether or not a curriculum or policy works. Uh, some ERIC records now have links to the What Works Clearinghouse study pages. These pages provide valuable information, including the study sample, the research methods used, the findings, and the What Works Clearinghouse ratings. This information is relevant for researchers who want to learn more about the results and sample characteristics of a particular study and to find other studies on the same topic, uh, program, or curriculum. For example, you may be writing a grant proposal that requires you to provide evidence from research studies that have met the What Works Clearinghouse standards without reservations. You can search a topic area with this requirement by entering a special search term. So in our search, if we add the search term WWCR on Y, And it is, let me try this again, it's searching, we may be uh, having, okay, it's back to the search, I think, yes. Um, so it now has brought up within our preschool literacy list, those that have been uh, designated from the What Works Clearinghouse as uh, meeting standards without reservations. So here, once again, we see something uh, from Christopher Lonigan, who we mentioned before. If we click into that, If you scroll down on the article page for this, you will see a What Works Clearinghouse study page link right here. If we click on that, it then opens a window for that study within the What Works Clearinghouse site. And you can see that it offers um, a good amount of information about that study. Um, you can quickly check on some of this information to help determine whether that study will be useful to what you're doing. Um, for example, you see here you have links to different things about the study. You may want to look at the details about the study sample, for example. So if we click on that, and it shows us various uh, data about the study sample. And from this page, when you want to go back to your search, there is a link that will take you back to that record in ERIC. Okay, so those are connected, it takes you right back. All right. Now going back to our full list once again. Okay. Once you have identified and narrowed your source list, you need to think about locating the actual articles. All IES produced reports and many gray literature materials are available in full text in ERIC. Most journal articles are not available due, uh, due to copyright restrictions, but we are working to get as many journals to allow us to display their full text as possible. As of today, we have more than 81,000 full text journal articles that are available for download. Um, for materials not available through ERIC, consult with your library or other online information provider for access. Um, additionally, ERIC includes a direct link to publisher websites where materials may be available in full text or uh, alternatively can be obtained typically for a fee. So we'll look at each of these things now. Um, if you want to look at things that are full text, again, right below your search window, you can click this box and search again and now it will narrow your list all to things that have full text and you can either 
download straight from the list with the link that says download full text, or if you want to see the article page first and see more about it and then decide you'd like to download it, you can also download from right there. Okay, and then taking it out of full text back to the list. Um, you can also look at items that have a direct link. For example, here the Emergent Literacy uh, Preschool Teachers Beliefs and Practices article again. If we click the direct link for that, it will let you know you're leaving the ERIC website and going to the direct link. Okay, and it will take you to the publisher's page for that article. Um, some users may have access to a journal via a university library site. If you do not, going to that direct link allows you to see other options for accessing the article through the publisher. So you'll be able to find more information there. Okay. So now that we've looked at each of these ERIC search tools, uh, we'd like to go through a quick example search to see how we might identify a list of articles for a systematic evidence review. Uh, staying with the topic of preschool literacy, let's consider a systematic review that has identified the following research question. What does recent research on preschool literacy indicate about effective teaching methods? Okay, so beyond our uh, question, let's consider that our user is a university student who has been required by her assignment to use sources that are peer-reviewed from the last 10 years and published in academic journals. So we would start with the full preschool literacy list. We know they need to be peer-reviewed, so I'd click on that and hit search again so that it's only the ones that are peer-reviewed. I know that they need to be from the last 10 years, so I can come over here and click that. I know that I have been told to use journal articles, so I can scroll down and on the left here, click that as well. So I've now narrowed it already, but because I know that I am specifically interested in teaching methods, I can also use the descriptor teaching methods right here in the list. So you can see that brought it down to 285 results. Right? And from there, I would be able to look through the articles that have, have met, uh, matched those parameters that I set to identify the ones that may be the most useful for what I'm doing. Um, and of course, it should be noted that this search has not covered every single ERIC tool um, because depending on what you're doing, your need for these tools will vary. But you can see by this demonstration that a combination of the different search tools in ERIC can help you locate the most relevant literature for your systematic evidence review, and it can help you quickly narrow down lists that may begin um, as, as quite long and, and get you to the targeted information that you need. And with that, I will turn things back over to Erin. Perfect. Perfect. Let's switch that to you. All right. So let me just pull my computer back so that way we can stop sharing. All right. And we're going to take some questions. So um, please submit them through the chat box and we'll go through them. Um, and if you guys have questions in the room, just shout them out. All right. So let's see. Oh, there's lots of them. Okay. Uh, that's, where's the chat box? All right. Here we go. All right. So can we filter by experimental study only? Um, on the ERIC website here, can I, I'm going to pull my computer close and I'm going to sh share my screen um, so we can go back to ERIC. So can we search by experimental questions only? Um, the short answer is I can't see the questions if we do that. All right, so we're going to stop sharing the screen. Um, and the answer is no, we don't have a tag. It's something about what type of study it is, if it's an RCT or a QED on the ERIC website. 
So you can find this information on the What Works Clearinghouse website, and we're going to just give you a quick tour of that because we were there anyway earlier. And if you go to um, whatworks.ed.gov, and there you can find this. We're going to hope that I do this right. Um, find evidence. I apologize, our internet is incredibly slow today at the department. You'll be able to get to the reviews of individual studies database that will have this information. Why isn't this coming up? All right. Yes. Yeah. So um, this is a publication search. That's not what we want. We want to find evidence. And if you go there, you'll get this really nice form that, let's see, is that going to be, nope, it doesn't, all right, we're going to see if I can get it through reviews of individual studies. If I can't get it up there, you'll just have to trust me, it's there, it's wonderful. Um, we spent a lot of time doing this. Okay. So, if you go to the Reviews of Individual Studies database, you can get it by just expanding this venue and it will be right there if your browser is working. And what you can do is you can see all designs and you can see randomized control trials, quasi-experimental designs, RDDs, and single case designs. So, what we're saying house has not reviewed all the studies that are out there, but there are about 10,000, give or take, in this database. So, that is one tool that you are able to use. All right. So, now we're going to go back. Um, how can we easily find resources that meet ESSA's evidence requirement? Experimental, quasi-experimental, correlational. All right, so we are going to go right back to what we are we're talking about with the What Works Clearinghouse. And when you saw those reviews of individual studies pages, um, we're going to just click on this at random. I'm going to hope that this example works. What you'll you will get the information of what type of study it is, and you will also then get information about whether or not it meets evidence standards. There are, um, and whether or not it has at least one statistically significant finding. Those, those tools you can use to um, figure out whether or not this could meet the definitions for ESSA. And the What Works Clearinghouse has plenty of resources um, that will help you find this information. Um, so I really recommend you checking out this website. It has a lot to offer. All right. Um, I noticed Bridget re-entered her search for preschool literacy. Can Eric display one search history? No, because the government has, so if you come from one search to another, it will keep that. Um, so for as long as you go, but if you leave from one page and go like, to a third-party website, we don't keep cookies because of government privacy restrictions. Um, next question. Uh, would the reviews in the What Works Clearinghouse be systematic, considered systematic reviews? Man, everyone's talking about the Clearinghouse today. This is great. Um, I wish my colleague was here to answer all the questions. Um, so we're going to go back to the Clearinghouse website. Um, the What Works Clearinghouse has a couple different kinds of products. They have the, um, what are called intervention reports. They have this nice little green icon. You can filter it here by an intervention report. Those are, in essence, systematic reviews. Um, so this is against a specific protocol. So this is evidence on I Can Learn, on algebra. Um, Chris, please text me if I'm not giving correct information. Um, if you also have practice guides, and the practice guides give are not necessarily a systematic review. They have evidence reviews, but what this is is that a team of experts works with um, the evidence in the field to come up with specific recommendations to the field, to teachers and to educators on what they should do based off of the research to increase practice such as strategies for post-secondary students in developmental education. So these aren't systematic reviews, but they're wonderful resources to check out. The IRs, intervention reports, are um, systematic reviews. All right. Oh. 
We're going to resume. We're going to stop sharing. All right, so next question. Um, are there resources on, on ERIC outside of the U.S., or is there a definite U.S. bias? Well, we are funded by the U.S. Department of Education, and when you look at what our mission is in law, which I'm not going to bring you up and bore you with, um, it is to provide information to U.S. taxpayers about the quality of education and education resources. So, yes, there would be what we consider U.S. bias, just as if the French government was having a database or um, another country was having a database. Naturally, we are trying to provide information to U.S. students about and teachers and faculty about the quality of education. We do index international journals and quite a bit of work because that is one of the fields that we look at. Um, but all of our materials must be in English or have a full English translation, so that does contribute to this. But I would say that in a new source selection, so these are new materials coming into ERIC, probably a third to half of the journals are based outside of the U.S. Um, some of that biases is big publishers like Elsevier and um, like yeah, some of the other ones are based outside of the U.S., like Oxford University Press. So it is common to have stuff published outside of the U.S., but they're still writing about U.S. children. Um, so we don't require it to be about U.S., but we do need it to be in, um, informative for a U.S.-based audience. That's one something that we look at. And for more information, you can see in our selection policy. Um, okay. When I search with a WWCR um, colon Y, which is the code you use for um, studies that meet the What Works Clearinghouse standards without reservations, give me results that do not have the link for the clearinghouse. For example, I searched class reduction size, but none of them had links to the clearinghouse. So what we're going to do is all right, we're going to keep that up. I'm going to see if we can share my screen and replicate what's going on. So um, what happens is Eric and the Clearinghouse work to make our information compatible, but they are in different, um, different databases. Duction size, WWCRY. So when we look at a study, there should be a link to the What Works Clearinghouse because it meets reservations. For some reason, this is not showing up here. So what we're going to do is we are, we will look into this and we will get back to you. If you email that question so I know who is asking it, um, to ericrequest at ed.gov, that is the, um, right here, ericrequest at ed.gov. Uh, we will get a response back to you, but that looks like it is a database error, which is always great to find in a live demo. All right, so next question. Can you use multiple descriptors at once? Yes. So um, what would happen is if you're going to search for this, let's say you're going to use descriptor of class size, and then what you would do is you would do small classes, or you might do academic achievement. This would only show results that have class size and academic achievement. So it is an and, not an or. All right. Um, can you find articles that meet the WWC with reservations? Yes. So what we're going to do is we go to um, the advanced search tips. And if you see on the side here, this is all of the back-end ways that you can get very specific searches for very particular reasons. And we don't, we have this out there, um, a lot of these fields might be created for ways as simple as I have to do a report and so I need a way to pull up information. So we're letting you know how to do it. Um, and these are how you find the specific information. The next follow-up question I am sure is going to come, can you search for meet standards with or without reservations? The answer is no, not yet at this time. Um, because you can do that on the Clearinghouse website, and we hadn't thought about it until we were doing the dry run of this presentation. So hopefully we'll have that information at a later date. All right. Um, what is the difference of using ERIC through um, the ERIC.edup website versus ERIC through my university's website? Well, this is free, and it's freely available after you graduate, after you move on. Um, so that is a big advantage. One thing that we don't have is if your university pays for additional journals, it's not indexed. 
Um, so we don't have access to all the subscription journals. So that's the difference. Um, we have new fields. We have more current information. All of ProQuest, EBSCO, Google, well, Google's different. Google gets their information from our site map, and so does Google Scholar, but everybody else from you to um, ProQuest will get their information by clicking on the download link. And what happens is we upload our downloads file on a regular basis, but it's not immediate. So the most recent time we uploaded it was in June. You're going to see another file very, very soon, as soon as we publish records this week. Um, but there's a little bit of a delay. There will, and so to get the most recent records, you want to use the Eric version. And I'm not sharing my screen. So um, what we'll do is I'll show you, when you share my screen, the way that you get it is by going in the footnote, footnote go to download, and that's how you can see the most recent files. And anyone from ProQuest to EBSCO to you can download it this way. Exact same information. Okay, is this webinar a PowerPoint slides license under Creative Commons? No, the government cannot have copyright. So the next part of the question is, may we include this webinar with attribution in a, life, a lib guide or library tutorial? Yes, please do. We're gonna be having this on YouTube in about two weeks, three weeks, so if you registered for this, we'll send you out a link as soon as it's ready. Um, and then we'll also have it on the multimedia page of our website. Do you have an idea of what percentage of articles are tagged in a way that make limiters work? Is this something the authors need to do, the journal, Eric? Okay, this is something that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to punt on that question because it's a large percentage. This is something that happened back, that we've been indexing since the 1950s. The problem is the sum of the quality of the way that things are tagged weren't great. And we spend a lot of time talking about this in um, this video, how to use ERIC identifiers. We also talked about it in this webinar. And I'm gonna, if you wanna find out more about that, I recommend checking out these links because they talk about why and what some of the interesting challenges were. But going forward, our indexers tag it based off of the information available either in the PDF or in um, the data. All right. Okay. Will Eric eventually have links to the evidence for ESSA website? No, we um, have links to the What Works Clearinghouse because that is funded by IES. We generally don't link to third-party publications. Um, if Evidence for ESSA had a publication and were a publisher, we would link to it on their pages, but like for their standards or something, but we don't link to third-party um, providers. Would Eric consider adding a methodology facet that we could tag? Well, we always will we'll add that to consideration. Um, one interesting challenge is how we would get that information, um, but it is certainly, certainly something that we would add to a consideration. Um, and whenever we think about adding new fields, there's something you can add going forward and you can add backdate, so it will be something we'll have to ponder um, to figure out if that makes the best sense using our resources. Okay, um, often when I am helping people with systematic reviews, they need to download and save hundreds if not thousands of search results. Any tips for doing this in Eric? Yes, we made this easy for you. Okay, so let's say you're gonna search for something that has a lot of information. Um, just two blank quotes, it's just a blank search for everything that we have. What you can do is you can go to export. And export allows you to export up to 200 records in the same format that you would use for PubMed or Medline and then index those citations, to import them into like RefWorks or EndNote or any other provider. Um, we can do this because PubMed, well Medline and ERIC were built off the same c computer code back in the 1950s, 60s, so it's really interesting how we're able to do this. Um, in terms of bulk download for articles, so that would give you the citations. It's not gonna give you articles. Um, the articles we don't allow for bulk download due to copyright restrictions. Even if Eric has a lot to display them, we don't have permission to do bulk download. How can you limit your Eric search by method? I'm assuming you mean methodology. We don't have that feature in Eric. All right. So we next have 
Eric, um, Bridget did a great job showing how to use Eric to identify potential articles when writing a systematic review. Does Eric have a tag or descriptor to identify published systematic reviews? No. Um, we, that isn't a type that we do, but if we were to add a methodology tag, I'm sure that would be in there. Um, next, can you set up links to your library subscriptions in Eric like you do with Google Scholar? Uh, this is an interesting thing, um, and we're working on it. There's some complications when you are the government in showing favoritism to a certain website, similar to like how linking to evidence for ESSA. Um, you can't show bias to one organization over another, and there's challenges in a way to do it that would make it open to do a link resolver. That just government is tripping over itself, but it is something that we're considering and we're looking to do because we hear that request often. All right, so right now I think that's the end of questions. Do you, do you have any questions in the room? All right, we're going to give one more minute to let people have questions. Now, if you didn't get your questions answered here and you have questions after the end of this, um, feel free to email us at ericrequests.gov. That will go directly to us and you'll get a response back um, very quickly. Um, you can also visit us on Facebook or Twitter. That's how you get a lot of our announcements. Yeah, yeah I thought of one question. Um, someone asked earlier if you could use more than one descriptor, mm -hmm. and if the answer was clearly yes, is there a limit to the number of descriptors you can use? No, there is no limit to the number of descriptors you can use, but everything is an and. So if you add more and more descriptors, yeah. you're going to get a very small subset. Okay. And it's important to note, so our descriptors are based off of our controlled vocabulary, um, and so in their hand index. So you might get a very narrow search, you might think that is everything we have. And it's important to know that we, there might be something that comes through the cracks. Because yeah. while our indexers are fantastic, and when we've done accuracy checks, they're better than machine-aided indexing, which is an interesting thing um, that I would be happy to talk about more offline if people are curious about, um, there is still always room for error. All right, a new question. When do you advocate that researchers use advanced search functionality? I think that's a trick question. Um, Eric doesn't have an advanced search question, um, functionality. So when would, it, when would it make sense to use a commercial provider to do that? Um, Bridget, do, do, you want? do they mean the advanced search tips, the things in that list? Oh, if you're talking about the tips, I would check out these tips to see if they, um, the advanced search tips to, to see if that makes sense for your search. What this does is this is more just a public way of describing our search. So um, why it might make sense if no child left behind, if you don't put them in quotes, it's going to search as four separate words. So that, like, that would be a good time to do it because those are very common words. Um, another time that it's really helpful is if you use a, have a last name Young, um, and what you do is that will come up with young child. So you might want to do author young. Um, the Well Works Clearinghouse, I has funded our examples. Um, and then, but that's generally the only time that I would recommend doing these. Almost always, and we have videos um, that will show you because people don't believe me, um, <laughs> it's almost always better to do it using the regular search. And so what you need to do is um, in the multimedia page, we have a video that says how to search Eric. It's like our first video. And we walk through an example with my old boss's name because her name worked perfectly about how if you try to make your search overly complicated, you miss some of her seminal work. And so that video is um, searching Eric to ed.gov. So I recommend watching it. It's like three minutes long. It really explains how our search works and why it's better to do a lazier search as opposed to a more structured search. All right. So now we're going to stop sharing because I see questions coming in. Um, how long is the delay before Eric records get uploaded to EBSCOhost? I don't know. Eric has no formal relationship with EBSCO. Um, so I don't, I can't answer that. That would be something to ask them. Um, 
generally we put a record up, but we don't have any formal notification process um, in any formal partnership. All right. So can you show me again how you got that little pop-up to, uh, to get the citation? All right, so it's not actually the citation. It is um, a way to download records to import to a citation manager. And the way that you get it is you just do your search. And what you do is you hit the export button. And when you click, click that, I'm going to do a small file just because I have um, really slow internet. And you can do up to 200 entries at once. And what you'll do is you'll get this metadata dump. And you'll import it into a citation manager, and that will give you information. Um, so this has been something that people have found to be really useful. Um, and you import it just like you would do for a PubMed citation. All right, so we're going to stop sharing. All right, so I think that is for real the end of the question. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I really appreciated having you here today. And if there's any questions, feel free to email us here. And we will be sending you out the archived link in a few weeks. So thank you so much.